and uh, data security concerns, national security concerns seems to be uh, the dominating concern that the U.S. has at this point in time. Let's tell you more about the end of term exams in colleges and educational institutions. They are pending since March because of the lockdown. They will now be held in September. The UGC has stated that exams for final year students are crucial and a blended mode of exam, that is online plus the offline exam, that can be held. Final year students who are unable to take exams can take special ones later. However, Delhi University Teachers Body has criticized the move, saying that these exams lack sanctity and are discriminatory. Now, MHA officials have communicated this decision to the con uh, concerned authorities as far as uh, the HRD ministry is concerned. But if you speak to the students uh, and different people who are the stakeholders in this decision, many would say that this is a controversial move and also discriminatory. Uday gets us this report. Delhi University is all set to hold open book examinations this time around and the medium of the examination will be online but students are not all that happy. My name is Yash Fogart, I am an economics owner of Dhyal Singh College, ka final year ka student. Uh, ka, parso, hume, Delhi University said that we will have mock test. In the mock test, we said that it will be told in a sample question paper that we will attempt the question and which way we will have five questions or six questions and we will have to prepare the question paper. Ki. But when we opened the mock test, khola, toh, मैं ऑनर्स का स्टूडेंट हूं और हमारे में बीए प्रोग्राम के बीए प्रोग्राम लास्ट ईयर का क्वेश्चन पेपर दिया हुआ था आप देखिए मॉक टेस्ट का मतलब यह था कि ये पहले एक अपना ट्रायल कर लें कि ऑनलाइन एग्जाम कंडक्ट कर भी पाएंगे नहीं कर पाएंगे सबसे पहली चीज उसमें जो टर्न अप हुआ सिर्फ 25% हुआ इन्होंने जो ईमेल आईडी और पासवर्ड जनरेट करा था जब वो बच्चा लॉगिन कर रहा था अपना क्वेश्चन पेपर डाउनलोड करने के लिए उसमें उनका आ रहा था एरर ये सरासर एक डिस्क्रिमिनेटरी प्रैक्टिस है व्हिच वुड लीड टू अ डिजास्टर एंड मास फेलियर तो मास फेलियर के रूप में सामने आएगा जिस यूनिवर्सिटी की फीस ढंग से नहीं भरी जाती बच्चों से उस साइट पे उसका पेपर वो ऑनलाइन करवा रहे हैं कि कैसे हो पाएगा ये देखिए ना दिस हैज हैपेंड विद ओनली 26% ऑफ स्टूडेंट्स पार्टिसिपेटिंग इन द मॉक टेस्ट द ड्यू सेड साइट हैज क्रैशड अप सो so, अब जब पूरे चार लाख विद्यार्थी इसको पार्टिसिपेट करेंगे इसमें तो ये किस तरीके से कर पाएंगे जब इनसे 26 परसेंट बच्चों ने अभी पार्टिसिपेट किया उसमें ये हालात हैं इनके राजस्थान गवर्नमेंट ने पंजाब सरकार ने हरियाणा सरकार ने जब मास प्रमोशन कर दिया फाइनल स्टूडेंट्स को तो डी क्यों नहीं कर रहा है स्टूडेंट्स को और इस, इस मेंटल ट्रामा से स्टूडेंट गुजर रहे हैं my colleague uh, Uday is joining us on the broadcast, getting us more details on that story. Uh, Uday, as you spoke to different stakeholders, of course, there are technical issues which are coming in. The system is not able to handle the load of so many students. Uh, uh, tell us a little bit more about why this pattern of examination is being called discriminatory and something which is not appropriate for, uh, you know, to be conducted in this manner. Well, both those aspects that you mentioned are very important uh, uh, you know, reasons behind why these examinations in Delhi University are being opposed. Number one, of course, the logistical and practical aspect of it all. Uh, you know, only 25, about 25 percent of the students of DU uh, turned up for that mock online exam. And the website uh, was reportedly crashing for many students. The uh, correct uh, sample papers were not uploaded. So yeah. a lot of uh, complaints as far as the logistics are concerned. And students, as you uh, heard them also, are saying mm. that, look, uh, what happens when all four lakh students turn up for that exam, the website will not be able to take that load. The other aspect, as you rightly pointed out, is the fact that they are being seen as discriminatory. Now, there mm. are students mm. uh, who are, uh, you know, uh, there are students in DU who come from Kashmir, from Ladakh, from different parts of the country which have uh, 2G internet, which have, uh, which don't have the kind of access to internet that perhaps students in uh, in metropolitan cities do. So therefore, mm. they are being seen as discriminatory because uh, then, you know, we're hearing reports of students who have not been, a not even been able to register for these exams because of how slow their internet connections have been. So how is it that they're expected to write the papers, upload them in time. Uh, we, I spoke to a student from Ladakh yesterday. He said that, uh, you know, his friends back home will have to go to the town to make sure they find the cyber cafe in time to upload those answer sheets. That is why uh, these exams are being seen as discriminatory. It's not just the student bodies, uh, but also the Delhi University Teachers Association, uh, which has been receiving letters from their students uh, saying that these examinations should not be conducted. Of course, mm. uh, the Delhi High Court is expected to pronounce judgment on this uh, by the 9th of July, but that is one day before the exams are scheduled to begin. Mm. So the mental agony of the students continues. Nobody really knows whether the exams are going to take place or not. DU, of course, has gone ahead and said that mm. they will hold these examinations, and those students who cannot take these exams uh, can take physical exams, offline exams later. That is, of course, also what the UGC... Uh, Uday, what uh, is the, the view which is coming in from the, the from the Teachers Association? 
What is the view what is, which is coming in from the teachers association? What are they saying? Well, the teachers association at this point is saying that, uh, you know, many of them, many of the students who have not been able to get in touch with the administration have yeah. been trying to uh, get this message across through their teachers. So the Delhi University Teachers Association, last we heard, hmm. has received over 1,500 letters or emails uh, from yes. their students telling them the kind of problems that they've had. In fact, this hmm. is how we hmm. know about some of those cases uh, where students have not been able to register. Students say that the website has been crashing. Some students okay. say okay. that uh, the incorrect sample papers were uploaded. All of Uday, these, please, uh, please stay uh, on with uh, us issues. because all the issues that you're raising, joining us on the broadcast is Akshay. He is the NSUI state president and I believe uh, NSUI has also moved in a petition against this move uh, by the Delhi University. Akshay, if you can hear me, I want to get in your perspective. Tell me as a student representative, what are the key objections that the students have and what is the grievance redressal mechanism that you're going to take? Ma'am, uh, the online exam in uh, Delhi University is a discriminatory policy, it's an anti-poor, anti-student policy because right now Delhi University is having monumental inefficiency in their system mm -hmm. where they cannot even display the semester results. They are talking about having an online exam and this... Akshay, can you still hear me? ...and exposed yesterday because in the past days, if we, uh, assignments, uh, when the Delhi University declared that they'll be taking in assignments, the Delhi University website crashed. When the Delhi University uh, announced the semester result, hmm. the Delhi University website crashed. And two, two years ago, the Delhi University website was, was itself hacked by Pakistani hackers. And now we are talking about a university which is All asking right. to have online exam for lakhs of students that's right while students are coming up from all over india well i understand i understand those concerns Akshay. and and we hope that the university administration takes care of all the loopholes that you're po uh, pointing out if they want to conduct online examinations there has to be an efficient way to do that some latest news coming in Right. Uh, there are anti-China protests held in POK against the illegal construction of dams. A massive protest rally was held by the residents to condemn the illegal construction of uh, Neelam Jhelum and Kohala hydropower projects. Now, the protesters highlighted environmental impacts caused by the dams constructed by Pakistan and China. Anand Narsimhan is with us on the broadcast to give us uh, more sense about what's happening at the site right now. Anand, uh, take us through the key developments. A lot of projects under the Belt and Road Initiative uh, have been criticized by the local residents, raising environmental concerns as well. Are these authorized or completely illegal projects? Frankly, they are illegal projects because this is sovereign Indian territory. As for mm. the Indian Parliament uh, resolution in 1994, mm. this is uh, sovereign Indian territory on which uh, there has been an engagement with uh, between Pakistan and uh, China. The, the fact of the matter is that that area is occupied by Pakistanis. It doesn't come under their jurisdiction. They have no legal control over it. Their army is not supposed to be there. So how can uh, Pakistan, which is sitting on an occupied territory, uh, ink a deal with the Chinese and allow this project to go on? The other thing that it's, being, uh, that it's doing is that it is weaning away the waters of the Jhelum from the beautiful Neelam Valley. And, and, and that is something which has also rendered that entire area uh, uh, short, you know, short of water. There has been drought there, which has never been, uh, which is a never before uh, scenario. Mm. Uh, farmers have been robbed of lands and their produce and their uh, lives. Once again, going to prove that for Pakistan, Kashmir is just a tool. It, they, they just want the land and the water there, the resources there. They've got nothing to do with Kashmiris and they don't care. The water is going to be diverted towards uh, Pak Punjab and uh, the Chinese are going to have control over that entire region. And uh, even for the construction of the dams and all of this, they are using terror outfits like the Jaish to guard and uh, using them as mercenaries to guard these projects. Mm. And uh, the projects is also means that they are settling in a huge number of Han uh, population there and uh, converting that area demographically also, forcing the local people to be, you know, uh, to uh, uh, you know, where marry their children into into the into with the Chinese and uh, settle them there and change the demographics right. also. So this is all happening concentrated, uh, concerted efforts which have been going on for the last three four years, which the uh, people locals there have been uh, very actively criticizing and standing up to, saying you cannot ink a deal in this land without asking us because this is Kashmir. This is not uh, something which uh, which is not a sovereign territory of Pakistan, and you've got no business to uh, inking a deal and doing this. 
on land which does not belong to you. All right, Anand. Thank you so much for putting all the details into perspective for us. Let's move on and talk about what's happening with.